Greetings, everyone. Welcome back. And what I'd like to do now is wrap up our conversation on constructor program and ask ourselves what we can learn from it. Uh, you can read about the 18 projects. Some of them will be directly applicable to our own situation. Uh, some will be applicable with a little bit of modification. For example, he approached the, the drink evil. Uh, and for us, it would be more like a drug evil. Uh, some will maybe not be applicable at all, but uh, all will be applicable in spirit. For example, he talked about women and he talked about students. And we are abusing students today in our civilization by burdening them with an impossible debt before they get out of our educational system. So, uh, but I think the most important thing that we can learn is to do constructive program as well as we can before we do resistance. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't respond to urgent needs. Joanna Macy has this division that she, I find very convenient and very compelling. She says we must uh, uh, limit the worst of the damage. We have to work on climate change, for example. We haven't got the time to build up a whole opposite system. We should be building up a whole opposite system based on alternative energies, but we must also be stopping the fracking, stopping the mountaintop removal, and uh, things that are absolutely urgent to do. But in general, do constructive program wherever we can, do constructive program when we can't do obstructive program, we can't do res active resistance, and be willing to go back to that quickly. So uh, the, the big question then that I want to leave you with is what would be the equivalent of Charka? It's been almost impossible for us to think of a single project which is concrete, which is proactive, which everybody could do, that could be done every day, and yet would be really aimed at the disestablishment of the wrong system that we have today. And what, the idea that I came up with when I wrote Search for a Nonviolent Future was to uh, repossess the mass media. And I still think that that's critical, but uh, refined it a little bit in the course of developing roadmap. So it's this idea that I want to leave you with that the core idea feeling that has to change to get us into a new story, a new paradigm is the image of the human being. Everything that we can do in any way to restore human dignity. And of course, this is not as concrete as spinning cotton. I wish it were. But our world is a little bit different and I can't think of any concrete single thing that we could do that would uh, have the equivalent power. But everything that we could do to restore human dignity, and of course nonviolence is a powerful way to do that, and to embed that new vision of a human being within an overall story where we are aware that we are mind, body, and spirit, we are not physical, objects who are not material beings doomed to compete for scarce resources. We're not separate from one another. And above all, that uh, we are in charge of our own destiny. And we have we are now far from having completed the destiny of human potential. So uh, it's, uh, I think, still to be worked out exactly how to do this. But we are recommending that whenever people get active, that they have in their mind this, a, an elevator speech about the new story and be ready to use it as an explanation of why they're doing what they're doing. And we can look into that a little bit more in our next conversation. Thank you very much.